Guys, real talk today. Let's talk about things that don't go according to plan, even though we haven't even planted a single stem in the field yet. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jesse. I am growing in zone 6AB in New Jersey on Bear Flower Farm. And this is my first year of flower farming. I typically focus videos on the business side of farming. And today I wanna to create a video around how I'm already pivoting and changing my plan based off of what I am seeing. So you saw from the title and the thumbnail that this is all about considering buying plugs instead of growing from seed to plant out. And I think a lot of us love growing from seed, even myself, I do love the process of soil blocking, of seeding, watching them grow to seedling stage, but sometimes things don't work according to plan. So let me give you an example. Um, I am really prioritizing, focusing on early spring crops and I am moving literally in less than three weeks. So I haven't obviously been able to get anything to the ground. I haven't even worked the ground in the new house, but I am planting some stuff in crates. I have uh, tulips in containers. You know, it's not a lot of, of volume, but it is something. And I do have some seedlings that will be ready for transplant immediately when I get to the new house, because there's some mulch beds around, just like for general landscaping that I'll be able to utilize. But initially I wanted to have at least 250 snapdragons in the ground and I wanted them to be early flowering variety. So if you don't know, snapdragons are grouped into four different groups based off of their bloom time. And this bloom time is dictated by both temperature as well as photo period, meaning how long is the sun out for a day length. So group one and two are great for winter or early spring. Group three and four are better for later spring and summer seasons. And I started around 300 snapdragon seedlings. Do you know how many I have right now that are growing at a, at a pace that I think is sufficient? I have under 50. I have probably about 45. Um, a part of it is because my dog accidentally knocked over a tray of 80 seedlings. Um, in my haste to re-soil block and basically put new seed on them, I left them in a corner on my table. I forgot about them. I forgot to water them. And I learned a hard lesson that soil blocks obviously dry out. And when they dry out, they're really difficult to rehydrate. And when you do rehydrate them, they rehydrate in a way that is really not conducive for seedlings to root. So I'll put a picture up here, but you can see that, yes, I got some seedlings to sprout but they're flailing because their roots were never able to penetrate through the soil block. So, you know, great learning for me just in the future around soil blocking as a whole, um, but it doesn't help the fact that, you know, I was basically down 80 seedlings from that alone. And then when I did pot up some of my seedlings up to a two inch block, so I started a lot of these in January, I knew I was potentially gonna move in mid-March and, you know, some people are able to keep them in the three fourth soil blocker, but, um, I saw the roots really starting to stretch and go into the neighboring soil box. So I was like, you know what, for these, I will pot up to two inches. And some of them got the message and are thriving. And some of them look like they are completely on their last legs. And it's just really strange because same soil medium, same watering, same fertilizing, same light. And yet you can see that these seedlings are reacting wildly differently. So that is my situation right now. I have nowhere near 250 snapdragons. And with the next three weeks focusing on moving, you can tell I haven't done any packing on this side. We've done a lot of packing on the things that you can't see inside the consoles and stuff, but I've got a lot of work cut out ahead of me. And I also wanna grow my own vegetables for personal consumption. So what do I do? Um, I'm not going to spend the time growing my own seed. And honestly, even if I were to try, I can't guarantee myself that I am going to grow them successfully to have blooms in late May to July. So what did I do? I actually started looking at plugs and I think that sometimes we don't think about what is actually a better decision because we let the emotions get the best of us. And when I looked into plugs, I realized I should have looked into these a lot earlier. In fact, I probably should have bought all of my snapdragons from plugs when I did the math. So this video is going to be talking about how 
buying from plugs might actually be a better cost consideration for smaller scale farmers, but also like when should you think about buying plugs, right? Not It's not just for situations like me where I'm moving. There's plenty of other situations where you should be considering plugs. Reason number one why you might want to order plugs outside of moving is you want insurance. So I would say that this is particularly for someone who is in their first or second year of flower farming. You know, they they know high level what they want to achieve, but they you, you may not have grown these from seed and been successful in growing in volume. So I've always been a smaller scale type of grower. I mean, I, I live in a townhouse right now. So by definition, I have no land to grow on. And growing, you know, 20 seedlings versus 200, 2000 seedlings is very, very different. Um, and I already feel it right now from some of the failures I've had from starting from seed. So if you want insurance to make sure that you are going to have enough seedlings, think about plugs. And I think that this insurance piece also carries over into succession planting. So one of my biggest lessons from last year was the fact that I was so concerned about having stuff bloom early for me that I didn't think about the period between basically late spring and early summer. And I had about three weeks of time where I basically had nothing. So for me, I wanted to buy plugs that could fill that gap in succession planting where even though this year I was more mindful that, hey, I need to start something now to get me through basically end of May through early June, I'm not gonna have time to do it because of my move. But you might also be someone who is in a situation where you have a full-time job, you have ch young children, you have other commitments and priorities where right now like you're focusing on all the seeds that need to get out early, but then what happens after when they finish blooming, right? So consider plugs for that reason too. So that was kind of one and two, having insurance, being able to succession plan. And the third reason is really just if you might have issues starting things from seed. So I know that a lot of people can actually get Snapdragon to germinate. They're really slow to grow. They start wilting after. But there are other things like Lysianthus, which um, I am not even attempting as a first year flower farmer. I told myself if I was going to grow Lysianthus, I would just buy the plugs. And I, I think a lot of people are also on that train because Lysianthus plugs are basically sold out until early, until mid late May right now. Um, but for me, you know, I just, I, I don't want to focus on a flower that I know is going to be high maintenance there. So that being said though, you know, you may want to consider plugs for easier growing things. And let me give you an example. There was actually someone on a Facebook group who said, I have $500 to spend and I, I'm trying to figure out what is the best way of spending it. I want a you pick type of um, type of farm where people can come and pick, but I only have $500 to spend and what would I spend it on? And my answer to that person was, I would not buy any seed. I would not buy any seed starting equipment because those two alone will probably add up to $500. I personally spent about $300 on seed this year. I had some infrastructure before, but I had to buy more grow lights. That was another $100. Right there, I'm at $400. And I feel like I'm on the lower end for seed spending. So if I had $500 and I was in her shoes, I would spend $300 of that amount buying plugs. And that would get me close to 1,000 seedlings, which is plenty for a U-Pick. And I would actually stagger that purchase. I would buy 500 first and then 500 another three, four weeks later so that I would get an extended period of blooms. But if I were to spend $300 on seedlings, that gives me $200 to spend on good soil, good fertilizer. And, you know, at that point, you're probably not going to be able to put in like drip irrigation because that's usually a few hundred dollars. But, you know, you save yourself the time, the infrastructure costs and the money to start seed. And this is actually where I want to focus the next part of this video on, which is the fact that, you know, plugs are obviously going to cost more on paper than starting from seed. But is it actually cheaper to start from seed. And you're going to be really surprised like me when you find out that the answer is you may actually be better off financially buying plugs. Let me repeat that. You may be better off financially buying plugs. Now, of course, it all depends on how much you're growing. So if you are, again, a first year cut flower farmer, you don't necessarily have a lot of shelving. You don't have a lot of lights. 
Um, and let's just say that you are someone who doesn't even have like a lot of experience doing this, right? Like you, you have limited space and you have limited space and time plugs are the way for you. But now let's say that you are growing thousands of seedlings. You have infrastructure set up, you have a grow room and everything, you know, at that point, obviously growing from seed is going to be a lot more economically efficient. So let's actually run through some cost calculations that I did for me to show you or, or to give you an example of what it might look like for you. Let's take Snapdragons as an example because this is my situation and I went through the cost crunching for me buying Snapdragon plugs. Snapdragon plugs are known to be very cheap to buy. So my criteria for buying plugs was I wanted to be able to source them from a local dealer. And when I say local, I mean, um, you know, they could travel on a plane, but preferably I could drive there if I wanted to. And I am really lucky that one of um, the most well-known brokers out there for smaller scale cut flower farmers is Farmer Bailey. He provides a lot of plugs and lo and behold, he is less than an hour drive away from me. So Farmer Bailey sells Snapdragon plugs in a tray of 210 for $44 for most varieties. Now you do have to factor in shipping. So what they do is they ship three trays of either 210 or I think it's 135 in a box for $38. So if we're gonna divide that $38 by three per tray, it gets you to roughly $13. So we're looking at $44 plus the $13 of shipping to get you to a grand total of $57 for a tray of 216 ceilings. Now he bills them at 210, but we'll say it's 216. So 216 ceilings for $57. Let's just say that not all of them are going to make it when I transplant it. I'm gonna give a very conservative buffer of 20% not making it. So 80% of the 216 gets me to about 173 plants. So what I'm saying is that I am gonna have 173 Snapdragons blooming, producing for me for the cost of $57. How many stems will each Snapdragon produce? So people pinch, people don't pinch. And I'm gonna say conservatively, I expect to get five stems off of each Snapdragon plant. I've seen people get like more than a dozen if they do things right. But you know, I think at the minimum, um, like five is a good number. So if we do the math, 173 plants times five gets me to 865 stems. So what does that fetch you in the market? And let's just say that you're selling these wholesale, right? Because this is the baseline calculation in terms of being conservative in, in, a, in revenue projection. I pulled up the Boston Ornamental Terminal wholesale sheet for this week, and I'm seeing that bunches of 10 for Snapdragon are going for $12.50. 865 stems, we're talking about roughly, let's just say 86 bunches. 86 times 10 or 12, $12.50 gets you to $1,075. Ultimately, what I'm saying is that I'm paying $57 to produce over $1,000 of revenue. Now, of course, I haven't counted in the cost of water, the cost of your time, the cost of fertilization here, but it gives you right now a rough idea of, hey, like for just one tray, I can probably get over 800 stems and it's gonna fetch me over $1,000, like a no-brainer even if I do factor in labor. So the other part you might be saying is like, well, I spent $57 only to get 200 plants, I could buy thousands of seeds for that, and that is true. But what we haven't factored in is your time, your, your cost of uh, seedling mix, as well as watering. So we're gonna break that down and see what the cost of growing an equivalent amount of seedlings will ultimately cost for the small scale flower farmer. Now, when I say small scale farmer, farmer, I'm talking about someone like myself, I'm expecting to do something like 20 to 25 bouquets per week. So you figure about 20 stems per bouquet, like 400 stems a week type of scenario. Um, so hopefully that puts that into perspective for you, but let's talk about the cost of starting seed. So we're going to use Johnny's as an example for a seed supplier. And we're going to talk about the Potomac variety of Snapdragon, because that is the type of seed I bought from Johnny's as well as the type of plugs that I bought from Farmer Bailey's. So 
the packet of 250 Potomac seeds on Johnny's goes for $7.95. And that is literally what I bought three months ago. So let's say I try to germinate all 250. I leave in a very conservative buffer and let's say that 200 of them germinate. So we're roughly on par with buying about 216 seedlings and having a buffer there too. Um, the seeds have cost me for rounding purposes, we'll say $8. And then the potting soil mix right now, I am not at a stage where I'm getting truckloads of compost and I'm being able to mix it with peat to make it more cost effective. I'm actually buying high quality potting soil that is specifically used for soil blocking. And I'm estimating that's cost me about $5 to create the mini soil blocks for 250 seeds. So right away we're at $13, which is $8 plus $5 for the potting soil mix, $13. This is where the costs start adding up when we start adding in time and labor. So realistically, I am starting my Snapdragon 60 days in advance of transplanting out. So this would be a mid-January start for me and putting them out in mid-March for a zone 6AB type of uh, growing. And in those 60 days, let's just say each day I'm spending three minutes watering the plants. And when I say watering, I'm saying I'm spending the time putting the water into the trays, making sure that the soil has absorbed the water, taking out any ex excess, and also just in general, making sure that, hey, my plants look good, they haven't wilted, they're getting fertilizer where needed, all that good stuff. I think three minutes is really reasonable to say for 200 seedlings. So we're at 60 days times three minutes a day, which gets me to 180 total minutes. When you divide the 180 by 60 minutes, that gets you to three hours of your time. Let's say I am using minimum wage to value my time. So $3 times $15, which is three hours times $15, which is minimum wage, gets me to $45. That $45 now plus the $13 in seeds has gotten me over the cost of both buying and shipping the plugs. And yes, I am shipping the plugs even though I live less than an hour away. I live about 46 minutes away, but the time and the cost of gas is gonna cost more than the $38 for him to ship me a box of three trays. So I talked about time and labor. I talked about the cost of seed, the cost of potting soil. We're not gonna factor in water here. We're gonna assume it is free, even though it's not free. I haven't added in fertilizer and I haven't even added in the cost of running the lights. Now I did a quick calculation for me of running um, 40 watt shop lights for 16 hours a day for those 60 days. And I'm getting roughly about 10 cents a day because I pay 15 cents per kilowatt hours. And I actually have a video on how to calculate that if you're interested, um, I'll put it in the description below, but talking about 10 cents a day. So 60 days gets me to $6. So I'm definitely over the cost of buying plugs, which was shocking to me because I just always assumed that, I don't know, growing from seed would be cheaper, even though I'm buying, you know, potting soil in a least efficient or at least economic ma manner, it would still be cheaper, right? Because seed is literally sent to start. And I think this is the surprising piece because people like Farmer Bailey are growing plugs at this mass scale. He's growing in this giant, greenhouse with grow and sell. I mean, they're literally growing like tens of thousands at once. So they have economies of scale on their end. I don't have economies of scale on my end. And for me, it was like a no brainer. I am going to buy 500 seedlings. So I bought um, 210 of the Potomac series. I bought 210 of the, the Madame Butterfly series. These are two Snapdragons that are summer loving compared to the other types of snapdragon. So I talked before about the four groups. I wanted to make sure that because the earliest day I can get these plugs is six weeks out, we're looking at a mid April ship date. When I get them into the ground, they are still gonna need time to grow bigger and to bloom. So for me, I'm like, well, the bloom time is definitely gonna be probably June at the earliest, right? Like a mid June bloom time. So. I wanna make sure that they're gonna be tolerant of the weather in June, which is likely honestly gonna be pretty hot. So I'm gonna focus on the varieties that are heat loving versus the, the groups one and two, which means that I would avoid the Chantilly series and 
Um, I don't think they had Costa, but they had like uh, the Snapdragon Cool Orange and the Maryland's. Those are all type one, type two. You do not want to buy those at this point, especially if you're living anything um, above a zone five, I would say. So, so for me, yeah, like I, like I hit the pay button, I bought it and it cost $160. So that was about 420 Snapdragons. I also put in, I think it was 135 of stock. So I am also growing stock on my own. I am growing, I'm actually gonna try to grow about 500 stock on my own, but I bought the Iron series, which Iron is known for being early blooming. They're known for having strong, sturdy stems, even though they're not the tallest stems. But because they are early blooming, I again would like to extend my stock season. So I bought stock column variety, which is known to be taller, um, a little bit less sturdy than iron, but flowering after iron. So you're seeing here that I am both using plugs as an insurance policy for me so that I definitely will have seedlings by the time mid-April comes for me to put into the ground, hoping by then I will have already worked the ground, put in compost, all that good stuff. But then I am also putting in the secession sewing piece and it takes off so much pressure for me to think I need to start 500 seedlings. I need to make sure that I'm nurturing them, that they're gonna grow. And plus moving seedlings is such a pain in the butt. Like you can't stack them. Um, I have to make sure they're not gonna roll around the car or else they're gonna get damaged. So just so much stress off of my plate. And I think for a lot of you, it could also take a lot of stress off of your plate. And even if it is just ordering like two, three trays just for backup, in case of your stuff doesn't work out to me, like look, $160 is not something to just throw away, but the alternative is you might be left with nothing, right? And so I would rather be in a scenario, assuming you have the space to grow 500 extra stems and try to find a market for them and hustle to do that than to be standing around with crap. I was expecting 500 stems, I didn't get them. Now I have no stems to fulfill either a prior commitment for like a CSA, for an event, and now I have to go to like a wholesale wholesaler to buy, right? So just things to, to think about and weigh the pros and cons of what a $160 investment might actually look like for you in terms of a return. So a bit about buying plugs. Um, I mentioned I bought mine from Farmer Bailey's. Uh, he is in Pennsylvania, but there are a lot of other brokers out there for plugs. You just want to make sure that if you are interested in buying plugs, you're thinking proactively about when you realistically need those plugs. And, you know, you can't just buy plugs and be like, oh, they're going to arrive at my doorstep in a week. No, these these companies that sell plugs are literally taking orders way in advance and they're starting seed based off of the capacity they have. And, and right now they're really just selling out for most of the stuff that they have. So you should plan for at least six weeks ahead of time. For a lot of other Farmer Bailey's plugs, they're, they're shipping out in like late May right now. So again, be very mindful of the plug is not going to be fully grown. You know, we're talking about like, like probably like five sets of true leaves at the most. They're still going to need time in the soil. So what is going to be the expected bloom time when you get it? If you're getting something in late May, you're probably not going to get a bloom until July. So make sure that whatever you're getting is not a cold loving annual or else um, you're not going to get blooms, right? Or you're not going to get quality blooms. Um, the second thing is that a lot of these plug sellers are selling to other growers. So they're selling to commercial businesses versus individual customers. And that means that they may require you to input an EIN number. Now, if you don't know how to get an EIN number, it is a free thing to get. Uh, the IRS does it. Um, and if you want step-by-step -step instructions, uh, this video over here should help you navigate that process. So. I hope this video was important for me. It was a light bulb moment. Um, I'm really gonna consider buying plugs from now on and I actually need trays for sunflower seeds. So I'm hoping to kill two birds with one stone to reuse the trays that these come in. But it, it really goes to show you that you shouldn't really discount anything out of the picture, um, especially if you're going into this with a business mindset, right? Like I said, it's very different if you're, if you're growing on like huge economies of scale and you love growing from seed, you get joy out of that. But if you're like me, you're in a pinch, you wanna be guaranteed blooms because you already have a sales outlet, make sure you think about plugs as an insurance. 
So let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I will see you next time.